الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد Then to continue with Al-Aqid Al-Tahawiyyah With the explanation of Shaykh Salih Al-Fawzan Hafizahullah Then we reach point number 16 Having last week Had points 13, 14 and 15 خالق بلا حاجة رازق بلا مؤنة مميت بلا مخافة باعث بلا مشقة That Allah the Most High is the creator without any need the provider without any difficulty the giver of death without any fear the one who resurrects without any exertion. So with regard to point number 16, then the author at Tahawi, rahimahullah, says, مَا زَالَ بِصِفَاتِهِ قَدِيمًا قَبْلَ خَلْقِهِ He has always had his attributes before his act of creation. The saying about Allah, the perfect and most high, that he has always had his attributes before his act of creation. Shaykh al-Fawzan, hafidhullah, said in his explanation, the saying of the author, (coughs) qadimun bilabtida, He's saying about Allah, the Ancient One, without any beginning, has already preceded. We had that as point number six. I mean, the author, Tahawi, already brought here in the book that we have as point number six, about Allah, Qadimun Bilabtida. That Allah is the Ancient One, without any beginning. And if we remember, it's more correct. As the explainer pointed out, it's more correct to say about Allah what occurs in the text, that He is Al-Awwal, which means the same thing, that Allah is the first, with no beginning. So, the Shaykh said here, so the author has already said in this book, that Allah is the Ancient One without any beginning. So there was nothing before Him, He the Perfect and Most High. And the meaning of that is, that he has the attributes of perfection. And his attributes of perfection are eternal. They have always existed and they always will. So just as he is the first without any beginning, then likewise his attributes. I mean, the attributes are the same. Just as Allah is the first with no beginning, likewise his attributes. Since they are along with him, he the one free of all imperfections. So they were always existing. Just as Allah, the perfect and most high, has always existed. Just as he has existed, his attributes have existed along with him. Always. So it is not the case, it is not the case that he existed to begin without any attributes. 
and that then attributes came about for him afterwards as the people of misguidance say so the sheikh here he refutes as the author is refuting here the saying of some people of misguidance they say, those who say Allah existed with no attributes and later on he came to have attributes when he created the creation he became the creator and so on the sheikh is saying this saying is wrong this is not the case So he said, to repeat it, so it is not the case that he existed before without any attributes and that then attributes came about for him afterwards as the people of misguidance say. Those who say, and he quotes what they say, that he did not always have attributes and then afterwards he came to have them. And the Sheikh explains why these people are misguidance. What leads them to say this? He said, They say so in order not to necessitate there being multiple lords deserving worship. As they claim. I mean, this is a false claim. Or multiple divinities in existence. <coughs> who are eternal such that the names and attributes would be partners with Allah in his eternity I mean, this is what the saying of misguidance the people of misguidance is what they say they say we can't affirm that Allah has always had these attributes and if we said that Allah has always had attributes along with him, that means we are affirming that these attributes are eternal. That Allah is eternal, and, he's got, and there are attributes which are eternal as well. So in other words, there are lords which are eternal besides Allah, and there are divinities which are eternal besides Allah. I mean, his, his attributes. This is their, fault, their false saying. The Shaykh said, So we say, how free is Allah? How free is Allah of all deficiencies? Subhanallah. This would necessitate that Allah, I mean they're saying that Allah didn't have attributes to start with. This saying would necessitate that Allah was deficient. High and exalted is Allah. That he was deficient for a period and then he came to have attributes and so became perfect through those attributes. High and exalted is Allah above what they say. I mean, they're saying, they're false saying it would, that Allah initially didn't have attributes and then he acquired attributes of perfection afterwards. So the Shaykh is saying that means then initially Allah did not have those attributes of perfection. So Allah was not perfect. This is what they're saying amounts to. Then the Shaykh said, And the fact that his attributes are eternal does not necessitate that there are other eternal lords. I mean, the fact that we affirm that Allah is the all-hearing and has always been the all-hearing. The fact that we affirm that Allah is the all-seeing and has always been all-seeing. The fact that we affirm that Allah is the all-knowing, and has always been the all-knowing, doesn't mean that we're affirming many, many lords. These are attributes of Allah, the one Lord. Shaykh al-Fawzan said, because the attributes are not something other than and outside the one who has those attributes. Rather, they are meanings found in the one who has the attributes. I mean, these are attributes of Allah, the one who possesses those attributes. It's not other lords besides him. And an attribute is not something independent of the one who has the attribute. So if you say, for example, 
And he gives an example to make it clear to us this point. He says, if you say about a person, for example, just to get this point, that when we affirm many attributes for Allah and that these attributes are eternal, it doesn't mean that we're saying that Allah is eternal and something else is eternal and something else is eternal and therefore there are many lords which are eternal. We don't say that. It doesn't, our, our correct saying doesn't necessitate that. He gives an example to make that clear. He said, because if you say, for example, such and such person hears, he has hearing, and he sees, and he has knowledge, and he has knowledge of fiqh, he's a jurist, and he is a scholar of the language, and he is a scholar of grammar, does that mean that this person has become many people? Of course not. It's still only the one person. The one person who is seeing, hearing, has knowledge, knowledge of fiqh, knowledge of the language, knowledge of grammar, but he's one person. So the fact that we affirm all of these attributes for a person doesn't make it more than one person. So the Shaykh said, so having multiple attribute, so having multiple attributes does not necessitate that the ones having the attributes are multiple. As the people of misguidance have said. I mean that's what they say. So if that, that point's clear that basically the, just to again stress what these people of misguidance say, they say that initially Allah did not have attributes, because that would mean, if we say that Allah's attributes are eternal, that Allah's hearing is eternal, Allah's seeing is eternal, His knowledge is eternal, etc., that means we're saying Allah is eternal, and seeing is eternal, and hearing is eternal, and so on. So they're saying that means we've got there's many lords which are eternal. And that is, we can't say that. So the Shaykh has refuted that. He said, no, Allah's attributes are eternal, but that doesn't mean that there's more, more than one Lord besides Allah. The fact that Allah is the seeing one, the hearing one, the knowing one. That doesn't affirm more than one Lord besides Allah. These are attributes of Allah. <clears throat> then he said, So Allah, the one free of all imperfections and the most high, His attributes had no beginning. Just as His self, His that, had no beginning. So Allah has the attribute of being the creator, al khaliq always and forever. This is what the Tahawi brought as his text here, that Allah has always had his attributes before, even before his act of creation. So Shaykh al makes the point here that Allah has always been, that one of Allah's attributes is that he is the Khaliq, he is the creator. And Allah has always had that attribute of being al-Khaliq, even before there was any creation. Even before Allah actually created the creation, he was always the creator, al-Khaliq. And he always will be. He said, da'iman and abadan. Allah always has been the creator and he always will be. Then he moves on to another point connected to this. He said, And as for the actions of Allah the Perfect, as for his actions, then they are eternal with regard to their type, newly occurring with regard to individual actions. So this is an important point here that we've had very briefly before. So having just made the point, to reiterate the point that's just been made, as for his sifat, as for Allah's attributes, his sifat, then he has always had them. Allah's always had them. And he always will have them. And as for Allah's actions, those things which Allah does, for example speaking, then... We say, with regard to speaking, Allah's action of speaking, we say, 
That with regard to the type, Allah has always had the attribute of speech. Always had the attribute. But with regard to individual cases of Allah's speech, for example, Allah's speech with the Qur'an, Allah's speaking with the Torah, then the, these, are, these are newly occurring events. Allah spoke with the Torah at one time, and at another time he spoke with the Qur'an and so on. But as for his attribute of speech, then Allah has always had that eternally. And as for individual examples of his speech, then he speaks as and when he wishes. The Shaykh said, So Allah the perfect and most high, he is the one who speaks. And he was the one who speaks before he actually spoke. And he was the Khaliq, he was the creator. Before he actually created anything, he was still the creator. And as for his speaking and his creating, I mean his actions of creating and his action of speaking, then these are actions which newly occur. And so on to the rest. I mean, so on to the rest of the actions. Those actions which Allah does when He wishes. So as for the attribute, Allah has always had the attribute. And as for the action, then Allah does it when He wishes, as He wishes. And all these points here, number 16, 17, 18, and so on, All the way through, all the points that we have today, they're all connected and they're, they're all a continuation of each other. So the next point, point number 17. لَمْ يَزْدَدْ بِكَوْنِهِمْ شَيْئًا لَمْ يَكُنْ قَبْلَهُمْ مِنْ صِفَتِهِ The saying of At-Tahawi, rahimahullah, He was not increased in anything by the creation of the creation. That was not already his attribute. Or to put it another way, it might make the meaning slightly clearer, that Allah was not increased in any attribute which He didn't have before by the creation of the creation. Shaykh al-Fawzan explains this point. As we said, this is a continuation of the point number 16. Shaykh al-Fawzan said, the saying, He was not increased in anything by the creation of the creation, that was not already his attribute. <laughs> Shaykh al-Fawzan said, meaning, his creating the creation. We do not say that he did not become a creator except after he created the people. Rather, Allah has been the creator, the Khaliq, always, forever without any beginning to that. And as for his act of creating, then that is an action which occurs newly again and again. So again the point there is, that Allah has always been Al-Khaliq, the creator. He has always had this attribute of being the creator. Even before there was any creation. Allah has been the creator without any beginning to that. And then as for Allah's action of creating, then He creates whenever He wishes, whatever He wishes, as He wishes. So the point that Tahawi made there is that when Allah's creating the creation didn't make Him suddenly become the creator. He was the creator before that. Then the 18th point, وَكَمَا كَانَ بِصِفَاتِهِ أَزَلِيًّا كَذَلِكَ لَا يَزَالُ عَلَيْهَا أَبَدِيًّا He's saying, And just as he has always possessed his attributes, then likewise he will always possess them forever. Shaykh al-Fawzan said in explanation, Just as he has 
has always had his attributes forever. Meaning, there was no beginning to that. Then likewise, his attributes will remain with him, he the perfect, in the future. So he is eternal along with his attributes. He has no end. Then he quotes the part of the hadith, Antal akhiru fala falaysa ba'daka shay. The saying of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the hadith in Sahih Muslim addressing Allah in the dua You are the last one so there is nothing after you. Shaykh al-Fawzan said meaning there is no end. He has no end. The last one with your names and your attributes. And Allah has no end. There is no end to him along with his names and his attributes. So it is not to be said that these attributes will cease to be with him in the future. Rather, they will always be with him. He the perfect and most high. Then he brings the 19th point. لَيْسَ بَعْدَ خَلْقِ الْخَلْقِ اسْتَفَادِ اسْمَ الْخَالِقِ saying of At-Tahawi, he did not acquire the name, the creator, after the creation of the creation. Shaykh al Fawzan said, this is a clarification and a repetition of what has preceded. I mean, what, we, what he's just been saying before. That Allah has always been the creator. Just his, all of his attributes amongst them is that he is the creator of he didn't suddenly become the creator when he created the creation. As the people of misguidance say, that initially it was just Allah with no attributes. Then when he created the creation, he became the creator and so on. No, that is false. So Tahawi said, he did not acquire the name the creator, al Khaliq, after the creation of the creation. And he brings point number 20. وَلَا بِإِحْدَاثِ الْبَرِيَّةِ اسْتَفَادِ اسْمَ الْبَارِي Nor did he acquire the name Al-Bari, the originator or the maker. Nor did he acquire the name Al-Bari, the maker, after giving existence to the beings. Shaykh Al-Fawzan said, so from the names of Allah, the mighty and majestic, is Al-Bari, which means Al-Khaliq, which means the creator. So Al-Bari, either the, the originator or the maker, or so on. So Bara Al-Khaliq means he made them. So Allah is Al-Bari, mean the maker of the creation. And this name goes along with Allah's self. It has no beginning. So just as we said about the Creator, Al-Khaliq, Allah has always been the Khaliq, without any beginning to that. And likewise, Al-Bari, the one who made or originated the creation, that didn't just occur, Allah did not gain that name when He made the creation. Allah has always had that name without any beginning. Allah has always had that, had that attribute. Then point number 21. Lahu ma'ana rububiyyati wa la marbub wa ma'ana al-khaliqi wa la makhluq. He possessed the meaning of lordship and nurturing when there were no slaves. When there were no one who were who creatures who were slaves under him. And he had the meaning of being the creator without there being any creation. Shaykh al-Fawzan said, so likewise he was the Rabb, he was the Lord and nurturer 
before anything existed for him for him to be the owner and the master of and the meaning of Arab the Lord and nurturer is and Shaykh Fawzan gives a definition of the term Arab as it goes at the start of Surah Al-Fatiha that Allah is Rabbul Alameen the Lord and nurturer of the creation Shaykh Fawzan here he gives a definition of the meaning of the term Arab he said Arab the Lord so just as he, the perfect, has always possessed the attribute of being the one who gives life to the dead. Just as he has always had this attribute, forever. And that he gives life and gives death. And this attribute was never absent it was not absent from him until he actually gave life to the dead. I mean, again, the saying of people of misguidance that Allah is the one who gives life to the dead only after he created the people and then when he gave them, when he, when he gave life to the dead, then he became the giver of life to the dead. So the Shaykh is making the point, no, Allah has always had this attribute even before there, there were any creation to live or die or be given life or death. Allah has always been the giver of life to the dead. And he has always been the giver of life, and he has always been the giver of death. Was only powerful when he wanted to create the creation, then he became powerful. No, Allah has always been the all powerful. Shaykh al Fawzan said, Rather, Al Qudra, power and ability, is an eternal attribute I mean, of his, of Allah. Rather, his having produced the creation. This is an effect produced by his being the one who has full power and ability. So the Shaykh said, the, contrary to the saying of the people of misguidance, the situation is the other way around. The people of misguidance, they say, initially Allah did not have the attribute of power, for example. So Allah did not have the attribute of power. And then when he came to create the creation, then he had the attribute of power and with that power he created the creation. The Shaykh said the opposite is the case. That Allah's, this is an eternal attribute of Allah. Allah has always been the all-powerful. And the creation came about as a result of Allah's power. As an effect of Allah's power, which he has always had. And then Shaykh al-Fawzan said, and Allah is the one who described himself as being the one who has full power and ability over everything. Over the things that exist and over the things that do not exist. And he did not restrict his power to anything in particular. He didn't say that he just, power, just has power over such and such. He didn't restrict his power to anything in particular. Rather, nothing renders him incapable. Nothing makes Allah incapable. And it is not permissible to restrict and say that he, is only he only has power over such and such. Then the Shaykh repeats a point here that we already had under point number four and I'll repeat the point that we had and then there's a refutation of it which I'll read inshallah and Shaykh al-Fawzan said here and it is not to be said innahu ala ma yasha'u qadir Allah has power over whatever he wishes you shouldn't say that that's what Shaykh al-Fawzan is saying here and also, Shaykh Muhammad ibn Mani, before he said the same thing as well. You shouldn't say this saying here, that Allah has power over whatever he wishes. He said, because this saying, Allah has power over what he wishes, this saying is particular and restricted to gathering the people, the inhabitants of the heavens and the earth. The only time you find this in the Quran, Allah mentions that he has power over what he wishes. He said the only time this is found 
is when Allah mentions, Allah the Perfect and Most High mentions the gathering of the inhabitants of the, of the heavens and the earth, meaning on the day of resurrection. And he quotes the ayahs that we had, the ayah that we had before. وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ خَلْقُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَمَا بَثَّ فِيهِمَا مِنْ دَابَّةِ وَهُوَ عَلَى جَمْعِهِمْ إِذَا يَشَاءُ قَدِيرٌ Surah Ash-Shura, Ayah 29, with the explanation, and from his signs is the creation of the heavens and the earth. And all the creatures that he spread throughout them. And he has full power to gather them when he wishes. When he wishes. Shaykh Al-Fawzan said, so this was a particular case. So, and as we said, we had this point before, as point number four, or under point number four, وَلَا شَيْءَ وَلَا شَيْءَ يُعْجِزُهُ And there is nothing which makes Allah incapable. We had this point here, that Shaykh al Fawzan said, it's not permissible to say about Allah's, to limit Allah's power by saying, Allah has power over whatever He wishes. But Shaykh al Fawzan said, that's restricting Allah's power. However, as a correction of this point, and as for Shaykh al-Albani, Rahimahullah, then he has ability over whatever I wish. And this hadith is reported by Muslim, and you'll find it there in the book of Iman. So this is a hadith where the like of this wording occurs, that Allah himself said about himself, that he has power, he has full power over whatever he wishes. Shaykh al-Albani said, after he brought this hadith, So the saying of Allah the Most High at the end of this hadith, but rather, I have full power over whatever I wish. This shows the error or the mistake of the one who wrote notes to Al-Aqidah Tahawiyah, quoting some noble person, that some people say Allah has full power over whatever he wishes, and this saying is not correct. Shaykh al-Albani said, I say, rather it is exactly what is correct after it's being established in this hadith. Especially when it is witnessed to by the saying of Allah the Most High, وَهُوَ عَلَىٰ جَمْعِهِمْ إِذَا, شَاءُ إِذَا يَشَاءُ قَدِيرٌ Surah Ash-Shura, the ayah we just had. And Allah has full power to gather them when He wishes. So in other words, it is correct it's not, it should, it's not to be criticized that a person says Allah has full power over what he wishes. Then Shaykh Al-Bani makes the final point. In case someone misunderstands, he says, And this does not negate, or this does not deny, that his wish and his power and ability, he the Most High, are general to everything as someone seems to have thought, and Allah knows best. In other words, this saying that Allah has full power over whatever He wishes, this is not a limitation of His power. It doesn't mean we're, we're saying that Allah's power is only restricted to what He wishes it to be restricted to, or it's only restricted to what He wishes. No. But this saying, there's no problem with that saying, and that saying is not a restriction of Allah's power. So that's a correction of, of what occurs in the explanation here and a correction of what we mentioned under point number four in this book. Then as for the last point that we'll take today, inshallah, which is again continues, point number 24, وَكُلُّ شَيْءٍ إِلَيْهِ فَقِيرٌ and everything is totally dependent upon him. Everything is totally dependent upon him. Shaykh al-Fawzan said, So there is nothing that can possibly do without or be independent of Allah. No angel, nor any heaven, nor any earth, nor anyone from the jinn, nor anyone from mankind, nor any inanimate object 
whether mountains or oceans. Everything is dependent upon Allah. Then he quotes the ayah. Ya ayyuha nasu antum al fuqara'u ila Allah. Wallahu huwa al ghaniyu al hamid. Surah Fatir, the 35th surah, ayah 15. With the explanation, O mankind, you are the ones who are needy and dependent upon Allah. And Allah, He is the one who is independent, the one deserving of all praise. Then Shaykh Fawzan said, So everything... So everything is dependent upon him and not upon the awliya and not upon the heavens. Everything in the creation is dependent upon Allah. Not dependent upon the awliya, beloved servants of Allah. And not dependent upon the heavens. And whoever says that the awliya of Wali, the beloved servants of Allah, righteous men. Whoever says that these beloved servants of Allah, these beloved righteous men, they have power and ability, which is different to human power and ability. And whoever says that they have some control of the creation, and that they benefit and harm besides Allah, then this is a saying of the unbelievers and the mushriks. Whoever claims that they only are beloved servants of Allah, these people, whoever claims that they have control over, the uni- over what's in the universe, they have power which is different to human power. They can bring harm and benefit besides Allah. And the Shaykh said, then this is the saying of the unbelievers and the mushriks. So the awliya the beloved servants of Allah and the messengers and the angels have no independence from Allah and they cannot do anything without Him. And the Shaykh makes the final point. So this nullifies the worship of everything besides Allah whether idols or other things. How can things which are themselves dependent be worshipped? Or how can you worship things which are themselves dependent upon upon Allah and forget the one in whose hand is the ownership and mastery of everything? These people who worship others besides Allah, how can they do this? How can they worship things which are dependent upon Allah and forget the one Allah, who is the owner and master of everything. Then he brings a nice little incident, a very nice little story here. He said, And for this reason, one of the scholars from the grave worshippers, he said to a common person from the people of Tawheed, so this is a, a conversation which occurred between a person who was a person of knowledge, but he was a grave worshipper. And just a common regular person, but he was a person of Tawheed. He said, this scholar from the grave worshippers said, You people say that the awliya, the beloved servants of Allah, they can't benefit and they can't bring harm. So he said, yes, we say that they don't benefit, they don't bring benefit and they don't bring harm. So he, the grave worshipper said, does not Allah the Most High say, and he tried to use an ayah in support of his grave worship, he said, does not Allah the Most High say, وَلَا تَحْسَبَنَّ الَّذِينَ قُتِلُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ أَمْوَاتَ بَلْ أَحْيَاءٌ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِمْ يُرْزَقُونَ Surah Ali Imran, the third surah, ayah 169. This the ayah the grave worshipper tried to use. He said, doesn't Allah say, the ayah with the meaning, do not consider those who are killed in Allah's cause as being dead. Rather they are alive with their Lord being given provision. So that grave worshipper tried to use this ayah saying, look, these awliya, 
you think that you people, you say that they're, they're dead, they've passed away. But the ayah makes it clear that they're alive with their Lord. In other words, that's why we worship them and we call upon them. He said, so this man who is only just a regular person, He say, Ya Ruzuqoon, they give provision. Did Allah say in the end of the ayah about these beloved ones of His who die? Did He say, Ya Ruzuqoon, they are given provision by Him? Or did He say, Ya Ruzuqoon, they give provision? So the man said, rather, He said, Ya Ruzuqoon, they are given provision. So the man who is a common person, He said, in that case, I will ask the one who provides for them. And I will ask for me, I will ask the one who gives the provision. Allah. I will ask of him only. <coughs> the Shaykh said, So that person of knowledge was defeated in argument by the evidence of this common person who was upon the correct natural disposition. Allah. So just, just a quick summary of what we had today. And the main point that we had was that all of the attributes of Allah the Most High, all of His attributes have existed along with Him forever. And they will always exist with Him. And as for individual actions of Allah... Then Allah does actions as and when He wishes. He newly does actions as and when He wishes. So He creates whatever He wishes, whenever He wishes. He speaks with whatever He wishes, whenever He wishes. But as for the attribute of creating and the attribute of speaking, then Allah has always had that attribute. We had the point that because Allah's attributes are all attributes of perfection, so if someone says that Allah didn't have these attributes before, that means that they are saying that Allah did not have this perfection before. So they are, they are saying that Allah was imperfect at some time, before, before He had the attributes. And this is false and futile. And high is Allah above what they say. And that was what the major point. And as for the second point, then that everything is dependent upon Allah and there is nothing whatever Neither any angel, nor any prophet, nor any righteous man who can be independent of him. And at this point shows the falsity of worshipping others besides him. Alhamdulillah wa sallallahu ala Muhammad. If there are any quick, very quick clarifications, otherwise... That's for point number 18 and point number 22 quickly. And point number 18 was, and just as he has always possessed his attributes, then likewise he will, he will always possess them forever. And point number 22, 
And just as he is the one who is the giver of life to the dead, after he gives them life, then he also deserved this name before he gave life to them. And likewise, he deserved the name, the Creator, before he created and produced them. It's the saying, the saying of the people of misguidance here is like the saying of the Mu'tazila and those who try and deny all his attributes. As an excuse for denying his attributes, and this is the extreme, the extreme Mu'tazila or the extreme Jahmiya, those who say, do you affirm, do you people of the Sun, do you affirm a Lord who hears? So he says, yeah, we, we affirm a Lord who hears. So they say, do you affirm a Lord who sees? So we say, yes, we affirm a Lord who sees. So they say, do you affirm a Lord, for example, who has knowledge? So we say, yes, we affirm a Lord who has knowledge. So these fools, they say, they turn around and say, you affirm three Lords then. You affirm three Lords for this creation. You affirmed a Lord who sees, a Lord who hears, a Lord who knows, and so on with the rest of the attributes. So they say, every time you affirm an attribute like this, you're affirming another Lord besides Allah. So the Shaykh is saying, no, the Lord is one. Allah is one. The one who has these attributes is one, who is Allah. And Allah has the attribute of seeing. He also has the attribute of hearing. He also has the attribute of knowing, of speech, and so on to the rest of his attributes. So the attributes are many, but the one who has the attributes is just the one, Allah. And the, as Shaykh al Fawzan mentioned in the, in the explanation there, so in the creation, of the, on the imper, imperfect creation, and the deficient creation, we can find a person who's got different attributes, a person who's got knowledge, a person who's... Such an, all the attributes of a single person. He's got knowledge of fiqh, whatever he mentioned here. He's got knowledge of language, he's got knowledge of grammar. It doesn't mean it's more than one person, it's just one person who has many attributes. So how about the creator, the perfect creator, the one free of all imperfections, and the fact that we affirm many attributes for him, then this is in no way means that we're affirming more than one Lord. So their saying is totally false and futile. They're just a product of their unsound and disastrous intellect. Subhanakallahumma bihamdika ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik.